So we are implementing transaction history. And transaction history is, is pretty sweet. And now, ooh, yeah, nice. So I do have transaction uh, history there. there. And um, one of the, I just want to mention this quickly in passing, but one of the small bugs that are still in this library right now at this point, the 0 0.2.1 uh, dev, is that if a transaction is initially seen while it's in the mempool, the timestamp that's given to it is a timestamp of zero. So it then it's sort of like stuck at zero. And no matter how much I update or resync, it still thinks the timestamp on it is, is uh, zero. So, uh, but that's all fixed in 0 0.3.0, which if you pull on master, you're going to get the latest. So uh, that's, that's fixed up. And this is all because of actually this project. We discovered this bug while while doing this. So, uh, and cheers to the Bitcoin Dev Kit guys who like fixed up my uh, my bugs like super quickly. We we saw it and then within a day it was like uh, good to go. And like Steve, because also you have to understand the Bitcoin Dev Kit right things fall from the mother ship, which is a BDK the Rust library. So if you find something you want to fix or change, it often has to go through the BDK first. And then flow through, you know, down into BDK JNI and has to be implemented there. So uh, when that's done quickly, it's it's epic. So super cool. What we're doing with this is we're displaying these uh, these transaction histories. Wallet transaction fragment. Yeah. Can we implement notifications when there is a transaction coming? Yeah, uh, good, good question. This is a bit of a separate, uh, separate issue. I think that we can, we can definitely do it. But um, in this case, because I want to keep it simple, we're doing, we're doing sort of a manual sync, right? We you have to manually sync it. Um, one way would be to do sort of like a sync every to, to put that sync on a you know on a just periodic sync basically right as long as the app is for example in front uh, front and center uh, you could sync every one minute or whatever um, but I think there there are probably better ways to do this um, and and I don't want to necessarily get into this right now. But it's a good question because right now it's not the, the the user experience you expect of a wallet of your other Bitcoin wallets. If you've tried other mobile Bitcoin wallets, like uh, you'll you'll get a notification when a transaction is coming through. Whereas here, we're not, we don't know about it un unless we sync. So, well, one thing that could be done initially, right? This would be something you could do easily, really quickly. Is upon launch, you could sync. So that'd be already a start or any time you navigate from one fragment to another would be a good time for a sync, right? So you could do that every every few seconds or whenever the, the user navigates or uses the app, at least it would resync a little bit. Whereas right now I have none of that. Like we're just really syncing when we press the button. So, yeah. Uh, okay. My transaction fragment is using this uh, this it doesn't even have a, a, an extra button to, to whatever. It's literally just a text view. We're going to open it. It's in my layout, fragment transactions. And it's a, it's a text view, look at that. It's a nested scroll view with a string inside. And that's it. And this string, and this is like not a neat way to do this. And there's like way more advanced and more beautiful, right? You should fix up the UI for this if you want to build something nice. But what we're doing is literally building one string, a gigantic string with all of the transactions. And all we have to do for that is to go into the wallet class and pull out uh, the list transaction method I call, I mean, the list transaction method, which will return a, a list of transaction details. So transaction details, if you remember, are uh, is this type that uh, BDK JNI has defined. And it's, uh, it's basically a type with a bunch of stuff in it. And let's have a look at it. Again, my workflow is my app and my library here. 
transaction details. If you look at transaction details, this is what's in it. So there's a bunch of things, right? Uh, transaction, TXID, a timestamp, the amount that's received, sent, the fees, and the height. The height would be uh, the block at which it was uh, it was mined. So what we're doing is we're pulling this uh, list of all the transaction detail, and then we're just parsing uh, parsing through it. You'll find if you pull on master, uh, I've I've made a new utility for this so that we can actually uh, parse through the timestamps and clean them up a little bit. And uh, I made an extension function for it, which is like a really nice little touch, very like Kotlin, uh, um, very Kotlin like rather I should say. And so uh, that's it's neater than just building this string like this, the way we have it here. But I wanted to keep it simple for this task. So we're, we're using this uh, this list and look at this final list is my string and it's empty. We start with an empty string and then I have a list where uh, this raw list variable is actually uh, what's called an iterable. And so uh, we can iterate over it and uh, Kotlin recognizes it as something you can reiterate over the items of this list. And so we're doing this loop and it's a for loop for items in raw list. And then for each item, we basically log it and then uh, create this transaction uh, string and add it to the final list. And then I add a new line character and we keep going through the list. So for each item, we're I'm just building all the, the items and then adding it to the string. And at the end, it just returns the string. And when we have this string, we uh, put it into the text view. And that's all it is. And that's all it is. This is just building it, this, uh, this string. And if you look at it from the logcats point of view, sorry, I think, uh, I think we might need to restart this little guy. Yeah, here you go. You're going to see it come in through the log cat there. When I do my sync, and if I go in my transaction history, See, we're, we're listing, we're, as we go through this loop, we're printing the items. So transaction details has these properties, a TXID, timestamp, received, sent, the fees, height, that kind of stuff. And then that's what ends up being printed here. I think that part is not the, the most complex of them. We're just grabbing this object and, and parsing it, so.